This is Villa Kenworthy, and today we're packaging meat for the freezer. <laughs> Welcome to Villa Kimberly. I'm Dennis, and today I'm going to be showing you how I package meat to get it ready for the freezer. I use two different methods, the double wrap method, and then sometimes I use a vacuum sealer. And as long as you take care and do it properly, you'll have this meat to enjoy for the whole year. What I have here is a venison top round. The first method I'm going to show you is the double wrap method. It's where you take and you wrap it in plastic, and then you wrap it in butcher paper before you put it in the freezer. This will help it keep from getting freezer burnt and protect it from that cold longer, and you'll have a fresher, better quality piece of meat, no matter how long it sets in there. First thing we're gonna do is get down a layer of freezer paper. I, I just have some inexpensive freezer paper that my wife picked up for me. Everything that I've used seems to work pretty well, as long as you wrap it nice and tight. So I'll just stretch some of this out here. I like to make sure that I don't have any wrinkles in it, that I get it as flat as possible. I've taken the meat and I've patted it down dry with a little bit of paper towel just to make it easier for the packaging. Okay, can I place the meat right here? I want to make sure that I don't, I don't have to place it completely center, but I want to put it to where the first layer will almost cover the top, and then I can fold it over from this way as well. I'm going to fold this over and then I press it down. I want to get all the air out of it as much as possible. Never going to be perfect, but I want to make sure that I take enough care to get as much as possible done there. Okay, and cut that end off. And then I'm going to take and pull this over and I want to pull it tight. This is where it starts to butt up a little bit. And then I'll push it back down. And then again, I press all the air out of it. Now this is the tricky part, with everything done that way, I flip it over, and then I roll the edges in. Again, I'm pushing tight the whole time because I don't want any air to settle in there, and I don't want any ice crystals to form and get the freezer burn. Tuck that bottom part under, and the first step is done. I've got a little bit of air I want to try to press out, but for the most part, I think I've got a good air seal on it, and everything is looking good. After we have everything wrapped in plastic the way we want it, then we want to take out some butcher paper. Now I'm going to take a length out, maybe about 18 inches long or so for this cut of meat. You'll have to just look at it and kind of measure yourself to figure out how you want to do it. Now, whenever I lay the piece of meat on here, I think that the best way for me to do it is I turn everything diagonal. I lay the meat towards the center, and then I try to match up the, this corner to the far corner. And then I wrap it going diagonally like that. You want to make sure you wrap this nice and tight for the same reasons. We don't want to let any air in or to get any freezer burn. So I just keep it nice and tight and wrap it. Then I have this corner tag in. That's what I'm going to tape. I do have butcher paper tape. That works well. Stick this on and then pull it over. Tape it shut just like that. Now we have to get the corners. What I like to do is find the end point. Then I'll take and make a little crease to the center. Put that down. And this is a lot of paper to go over the edge of it. So I'm just going to go ahead and fold that in a little bit to get a flat edge. Then I take and lay one of the corners over. And I give myself a nice corner to tape up with. You can see that there. Then I pull this over nice and tight. Try to make sure that it's pulled all the way. Take some of that butcher's paper tape. Lay a little bit of that down. And then I always take and put another one across just to make sure, just in case something catches or it gets pulled apart. I don't want this unwrapping. We got one end done, now we're going to do the other end. I use the same methodology. Find the edge of it. Just make a little bit of a crease. Fold the end over flat to give myself a corner to tape down. Then I take and 
fold it over, make myself a corner, pull it in tight, Whenever I put the tape on the corner, I always give a little bit of a tug just to make sure I get any slack out. And there we have it. Nice wrapped cut of meat. I always take a Sharpie marker and label what it is. This is top round. And I put the month and year on the package so I always know which one I'm grabbing from. That's how I butcher wrap all of my meat, uh, the double wrap method. And the next thing we're gonna show you is the uh, vacuum sealing method. Next cuts of meat we're gonna be packaging in our vacuum sealer are gonna be these two beautiful eye of round from the hindquarters of a deer that I shot. I like to take some of the specialty cuts of meat that I'm gonna use and I vacuum seal those because I can find them faster. And then a lot of times I keep some of the vacuum stuff in the upstairs freezer and then some of the other double wrap package stuff down in the pantry in the basement. I do like to grab my pre-made bags from Cabela's. I don't like to take the time to cut a whole bunch of bags like that. So I find the three or four sizes that I need depending on the use. And then I just purchase those. The pre-cut saved me a lot of time. I'm basically just packaging and then sealing. And the vacuum sealer we're going to be using is I have a Cabela's commercial grade vacuum sealer. I love this thing. They have new models coming out all the time. This one's a few years old and they have the newest model coming out I think is a beautiful stainless steel one. What I love about these is that these have a nice 18 inch uh, ceiling diameter and then if your, your seals or your heating element ever go out, they sell replacements specifically for these. So you just have to know the size. You go and pick that up and replace it and you're back in business. Next step is to take and get the meat into the bag. I have patted these dry with some paper towel as well just to make them easier to handle. As I mentioned, I really do like the pre-cut bags from Cabela's. They do a great job. Not all of these bags are created the same. Some of them don't seal as well. Some of them don't draw out the air as well, but I've had really good luck with the Cabela's brand bags. So I roll this inside out so that I don't get the ends that I want to seal wet. Just take it just like that. Stick one of them in. I have those side by side. Now I just unfold the long edge, get them positioned how I want them, and then we're ready to seal. Okay, can you try to make sure that the end of your bag goes over the lip of the seal here? I let that sit down, I pull it tight, the handle helps lock it into place, and then I'm going to hit the seal button. Sometimes I pull this out to help it out. Once you hear that air release, then it's done, and all the lights on top will shut off. You can unlock this and pull it out. I have a great double seal. That is my preferred method, just to make sure I don't have any air leaks. One other thing to mention about these bags, I don't know if you can see this, but it's got this little uh, cut edge. This allows you to just rip the bag open without needing a knife or scissors. And there you have it. I've got these vacuum sealed, and then I can just label them. It's got a spot to write anything you want here on the bag, and then I throw them in the freezer. And I've got them ready for next time. So I did want to point out some of the features for this vacuum sealer. It does have a space to store the large area storage bags that you hand cut. I've got a few of those in here. I don't use them very often, but if I'm doing something really large, these right here will come in handy. It also has a cutter. I do believe that the majority of vacuum sealers I've seen always have a cutter there for you to be able to do that. But the important parts are locking handle, and then it's got a couple different options here. So if, you if you're vacuum sealing something for a canister, it's got a tube that'll fit in here so that you can do that. I, I haven't really used that much, but it's also marked for marinades. The important parts to me are the uh, seal. So extended double seal, moist seal. So if it has some moisture in there, and I think that'll give it a little bit more time. I don't know if that applies any more heat or not. And then a dry seal. I almost always use the extended double seal in my situations just to make sure that I don't have any air leaks.
gentle and normal. I don't have much cause for a gentle uh, vacuum, so I keep it on normal. This right here is the vacuum seal button and cancel. Uh, you've got a pulse vacuum setting, uh, then it's got the manual seal. So if I just wanted to uh, use the manual seal when I'm making my own bags, this is the button you're going to push to seal up that end before you actually put stuff in it. And then it's got a progress lighting indicators. So this bar right here will just light up as it goes until it's all the way done. And it can sense the vacuum and make sure that there's no other air leaking out and then that's how it knows when it's done. When it's sealing, the manual seal indicator will light up. And then whenever it's done, all of that stuff goes off, that air releases, and then you know you're uh, able to unlock the lock and pull out the bag. So I thought I'd take a moment to show the versatility of these two methods, depending on what your needs are. It doesn't matter if you're a hunter or if you just like to get a good deal and purchase in bulk uh, while a good sale is going on at your local grocery store. I often do that as well. I'll take and uh, buy a whole ribeye, I'll hand cut my steaks, and then I like to vacuum seal and package those steaks for later use. Uh, either which way, it's all about preserving food and making sure that you have meals down the line. So here I'll give you an assortment. This is probably about 25% of what I've got downstairs in the freezer. To start with, I do raise my own chickens. So quite often I'll take and uh, freeze them whole after we uh, pluck them and dress them. We can freeze them whole to cook a whole chicken. If I'm doing stuff for soups with the older birds, I'll take and cut them in half. And then I just do half a bird and that works out well. Drumsticks, package those up. This is a meal size that we decide to grill. And then you can also have enough, grab two packages if you're having friends over. I always love to save the tenders from the chicken. Uh, we do breasts the same way, but I'll hold on to those and that makes a really nice meal and usually some leftovers the next day. Package up some chicken thighs. Vacuum sealer is probably the most versatile tool I have, but uh, this is how I like to do meatballs. I'll take and uh, roll them up and then I'll freeze them and once they gain a firm enough hold, I stick them in the bags and I vacuum seal them just like that. I smoke some turkey breasts and then I'll just pre-slice that, put it right in here, makes great sandwiches or you can even pop it out for a meal. I do brats, here's the eye of round that we just did so I'll be throwing that in with this stuff. Snack sticks work great. All of these were done with that Cabela's vacuum sealer. It works great, it holds up well, and then I open these up. This has been a year ago. I can open these up and still eat them and they taste great. And then even venison bacon. These right here, you get a few of them in here, you vacuum seal them, they stack really well, and you can fit a lot of these in a tight spot. Take them out, and you're ready to use them. I let them thaw, use that easy tear slit right there, open it right up, and then you cook it just like regular bacon. And over here, it's just got everything. These are all parts of a deer. I break it down into individual muscle groups and then I freeze those. And then I take a, another larger part of the scrap and then I set that up for grind. But you know, sirloin tip, double wrapped, uh, bottom round, top round, back strap. And another thing I like to do is take the uh, top butt or that top sirloin that's at the very top of the hip. That's a great cut of meat for making soup. So I always label that with soup for my wife so she knows. And this is basically what I do. And then it all fits and stacks nicely in the freezer and I save room and I can fit more in there. And then I've got everything labeled and ready to go for whatever I need in the future. Thank you for joining us on Villa Kimberly. I hope this was helpful. Anyone looking to start packaging and preserving their own meat uh, for the freezer. If you have any comments or questions, put them down below. Let me know what you're thinking. And if you like this, please hit the subscribe button, like and share, hit the bell for notifications. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's something else you'd like to see in the future. We'll see you next time.